Does this famous seascape make you feel happy and peaceful? Hmm, that's interesting. Because it shouldn't. This piece is called The Great Wave by Katsushika Hakusai. You've probably seen it, maybe more times than you can count. But have you ever really seen it? I guess we'll find out. The actual title of this piece translates to Under the Wave off Kanagawa. But what does it mean, under the wave? Oh. Oh. Oh no. Wait, what is that? Anyway. Our eyes are immediately drawn to a glorious wave curling over a bright blue ocean. Sea spray thrashes off of it and appears like flurries above a serene snow-capped Mount Fuji in the distance. Yep, that's right. This tiny triangle is actually a massive mountain and technically the subject of the piece. Under the Wave off Kanagawa is only one of a series of 36 woodblock prints created by Hakusai called 36 Views of Mount Fuji, and it may come as no surprise that this piece is the most famous of the group. It's so calm and serene. But if we look a little closer, it begins to look a lot less free-spirited and fun-loving. Why? Because of the three boats full of fishermen below the great wave, desperately trying to save themselves from being swallowed whole by the turbulent waters. Have you ever noticed them? Hakusai created this iconic woodblock print around the year 1830, a time when Japan had been basically isolated from the rest of the world for about 200 years. Starting in the 1630s, Japanese citizens weren't allowed to leave Japan and foreigners couldn't come in, and going against this law was punishable by death. Though there were some exceptions, such as the Dutch and the Chinese were still permitted to trade out of the port of Nagasaki. This might seem like a very odd arrangement, but Japan thrived in a lot of ways under these isolationist policies as they were able to benefit from many Western advancements by way of the Dutch and the Chinese. Japan's seclusion brought them relative peace and allowed the arts to boom. We can even see evidence of European influence in Hakusai's famous piece. Both the low horizon line and the use of linear perspective were very European, along with the iconic blue color called Prussian blue that came from Prussia. The Japanese people saw waves as a symbol of safety from foreign invasion, as the sea surrounding the island was rough, which made it almost impossible to cross. But in this depiction, the water no longer looks protective, but instead aggressive, as the foam at the crest of the wave forms white claws that look like they're trying to gobble up the men below. But the thing about waves is, they're always changing. And I have a feeling Hakusai sensed the tide was about to turn. The rest of the world wasn't a fan of Japan's isolation, because they saw them as having their cake and eating it too, since they benefited from Western advancements without having to share their own with the world. They wanted a piece of Japan's prosperity pie, so they took it. In 1853, an armed U.S. Navy ship sailed to the island and demanded they trade freely with the rest of the world. And just like that, Japan begrudgingly opened its doors. The Great Wave took the world by storm. It had this unique allure because it struck the perfect balance of being exotic while also seeming familiar to the European eye, particularly because of the use of Prussian blue. Woodblock prints such as Under the Wave off Kanagawa were made to be reproduced, which meant that thousands of copies were created and sold of this painting around the world. And by the mid-19th century, Japanese art had made its way to Europe, where Impressionists like Van Gogh were taken by Hakusai's works. In fact, many believe Starry Night was inspired by the Great Wave. The title of this series is written in the upper left corner in the white rectangle frame, which translates to 36 views of Mount Fuji on the high seas of Kanagawa under the wave. The inscription to the left of the box has the artist's signature, which translates to from the brush of Hakusai, who changed his name to Litsu. 
Hakusai was a very interesting and eccentric person. During his life, he changed his name 30 times. He was known to hate cleaning, so whenever his house became unlivable due to the filth and clutter, he would simply move out. And so it's said that he relocated 93 times during his life. At the age of 50, he was struck by lightning. And after this, his life changed forever. It's like a switch flipped in his brain and he went on to create the greatest art of his career. The following year, he created one of his most famous woodblock prints, The Dream of the Fisherman's Wife, which, well, I did mention he was eccentric. Maybe it's worth mentioning that Hakusai's quoted saying, All I have done before the age of 70 is not worth bothering with. And since he created this painting before 70, I guess he wanted us to forget about this one. Around the age of 70, he released his series, 36 Views of Mount Fuji. These are some of the last pieces Hakusai created when he was 90 years old. At the bottom of a diptych, he signed it, Old Man Age 90 Manji. Manji was his final name before he died. Below it is a seal that says 100. The artist seems to be saying here that he is 90, but he wishes to live to be 100. Sadly, this never came to be, and he died that same year. But Hakusai believed that the older he got, the better of an artist he became. And honestly, he was right. It's said that his last words were, if heaven would give me just five more years, I might become a true painter. Nowadays, we see this print everywhere. In logos, on hoodies, in emojis. You might say, and you wouldn't be wrong, that the world went absolutely ham reproducing this piece. But the truth is, that's what it was made for. The Great Wave is an example of ukiyo-e, which is a genre of mass-produced woodblock prints. They were considered cheaper forms of art that cost around the price of a bowl of noodles and often depicted courtesans and actors. The Great Wave was reproduced thousands of times until the woodblock wore out. We can see this wear when we compare an earlier print to a later one. When I look at this giant wave looming over these tiny hunched fishermen in the boat, I get a feeling of overwhelm and hopelessness. It reminds me of the most difficult moments, that breakup, that layoff, the death of a loved one, those days when you're facing something that seems so unbearably big, it feels like you'll never survive. Those days when the only way to get through is just to hold on. Even Mount Fuji, the tallest peak in Japan, is dwarfed by the monster wave. However, if we look at this from the perspective of a mountain, okay, I know that's a weird thing to say, just give me two seconds to explain. From a geological perspective, these daunting days are but a single snowflake in a blizzard of time. It's in this way that Mount Fuji in the background contrasts with the foreground's chaos, imparting a sense of calm and groundedness to the image. This is the type of piece that I imagine comes with age, a kind of calm born from experiencing the relentless waves of life come and pass over and over again, a perspective that Hakusai himself may have had. I like to think Hakusai may have envisioned Mount Fuji as a symbol of himself, a serene observer amidst life's turbulent seas. This painting is strikingly terrifying, and although it might not be as serene as you once thought, I hope you can still appreciate it now for the story it tells and for the beautiful chaos that it truly is.